For what purpose does the gentlelady from California, Mrs. Capps, rise? Without objection, so ordered, the gentlelady is recognized for five minutes. Madam Speaker, I join my colleagues this evening in honoring the life of our dear friend, Julia Carson. And I want to say a word uh, in keeping with the comments by my, our colleague, our leader, John Larson from Connecticut, who spoke of the sacredness, really, of this hour that we can spend with one another uh, to lift up the life of a colleague such as Julia Carson. Julia entered Congress the same year as my husband, Walter, in 1996. And the reason I honor this uh, time together is that I have a poignant memory. Um, my husband died suddenly. And uh, my daughter and I found ourselves on the floor here, uh, listening to our, his colleagues, now my colleagues, uh, speak of his life. And it was a, a, a tradition that I wasn't familiar with. But it, it touched me in a way that I know um, blesses the memory of those who've gone, who have served with us. And in this case, for someone as special as Julia Carson. Uh, it is an, a, a moment that this place uh, becomes what it should be uh, and is treasured uh, by me. Now, this member of Congress became my colleague, Julia Carson, when I joined Congress in 1998. One of the first events I attended as a member was an event um, held by domestic violence advocates, a coalition, a national coalition of the kind of grassroots organizations that I know Julia Carson represented in Indianapolis, but I also, in my previous life, as a nurse in my community, knew very well uh, from the, at the community level. And I wasn't as experienced when I came to Congress as Julia was when she did. And I listened to her. We were kind of lined up members of Congress to, to address this coalition on domestic violence. I could speak from my professional experience. But she spoke before me, and she dazzled that crowd because she spoke as a survivor and as someone who had experienced every single thing that they themselves were there here in this capital to represent on behalf of our community. She had broken the barriers that have entrapped so many Americans of color, Americans who are women. She knew how to fight for herself, for her children as a single mother, as a community member who knew what ceilings were like with glass, gender, ethnicity, race, and she could relate that to people. And on that day that I listened to Julia as a brand new member, I knew that I was in a very special crowd if it included someone like Julia Carson. She knew how to take her experiences and become such a role model and strong advocate. Civil rights, victims of domestic violence, she improved the lives of countless individuals, and she did so by fixing things that were broken, but also by inspiring people to not give up. And then as we moved along, and, as, uh, and it's been referenced, her style and her elegance, I used to love to see her here and to see her bearing and to see her fitting the word queen in every sense of that word. What a delight to serve with Julia Carson. And we saw her as her illness began to show its effects on her body. Never on her spirit, never on her soul, never once dampened her smile, her dazzling, beautiful smile. And when I would see her moving slowly and then with assistance, even in a wheelchair to come and move about, she never gave an indication of weakness or that she was down. She was always up and inspiring me when I would see her. I wanted to spend time with her. This was a tough time 
For her, she never let us know it. She kept fighting for all of the issues she cared so much about. And now I want to just close by saying, you know, Julia, we owe you to continue the legacy that you began. I think of Julia's suffering with lung cancer, and I think about the fact that three of her colleagues, four now of our colleagues this year, have died of cancer in, from this place. And Julia, I make a pledge to you and to the others that we need to not rest. We need to follow your courage and your endurance and not rest until we do something about this dreaded disease. And do something here and do it in your memory and do some other things in your memory as well. And so I make that pledge to you, Julia. And I also join my colleagues in remembering you forever for your wit, your elegance, your perseverance, and of course, always, Julia, your smile. I will always love you and treasure your memory, and I yield back. The gentlelady from California yields back. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Florida rise? Without uh, objection, so ordered. The gentlelady from Florida, uh, Ms. Brown, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to remember a spirited warrior for her constituents and those who could not fight for themselves, Julia Carson. She served six years in Congress, but her experience here far outweighed her time here. She always remembered where she was from and how she got there. This was a tough lady. She spent her initial swearing in in the hospital recovering from double bypass surgery. She was a wonderful personal friend who I enjoyed spending time with. I have my Julia Carson story. I remember a few years ago, we was going to an event at the Army Navy Golf Club. We were going to a, a program, a celebration and our driver got lost and made a wrong turn. We end up on the seventh fairway. We was going up the hill and the car couldn't go up and it couldn't go back. I panic, but she was calm during this entire process. We eventually was rescued by the Capitol Hill police. I will never forget that experience. Julia Carson was a classic lady, very classic. And I love the way she dressed and the way she held herself. Like Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4 through 7, she fought a good fight and she finished the course. But most important, she kept the faith. Julia, I will miss you. I yield back the balance of my time.